A blessed afternoon to everyone. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat, mga kasama sa pagdiriwang ng uh, banal na misa, nakikibahagi sa pamamagitan nitong online uh, or virtual celebration of this Mass. Out of curiosity, I consulted the latest statistics on divorce and uh, it reveals interesting facts. Here are some. As of 2016, both marriage rates and divorce rates in the U.S. is decreasing. Good news, sabi ng mga iba. No? Recent studies have shown that uh, millennials are choosing to wait longer and to get married and staying married longer. And the main driver in the decline of both marriage and divorce rate in the U.S., they said. The divorce rate in the U.S. is 3.2% per uh, 1,000 population. The U.S. is the third highest divorce rate in the world. Russia is the number one. And Belarus, another uh, uh, of the, one of the countries, a former uh, Soviet Union country. Social scientists are predicting also the surge in number of divorce during this pandemic because there is a significant increase, they said, of domestic violence related to great stress, because of lockdown, financial strain, and other considerations. Other facts, for example, is almost 50% of uh, marriages in the U.S. will end in divorce. 50%. No? Divorce or separation. 41 of the first marriages end in divorce. 60 of second marriages end in divorce and 73% of third marriages end in divorce. And the frequency, they said that every 13 seconds there is one divorce in America. The average first marriage that ends in divorce last about eight years, they say. And there is also, there are also months where there, the, the, uh, there are more uh, divorce happen between January to March, they say. That is after the great festivities of Christmas, family holidays, Some was trying to insinuate, probably because with the celebrations of Christmas, where there are, com together with the celebrations, are also tensions with families, with, uh, with expenses, etc., they said. Now, there is another, in terms of professions, they say, with the highest divorce, Alin daw yung mga professions with more uh, with more divorce are number one forty three percent of uh, per uh, thousand are the dancers the bartenders then massage therapies gaming uh, workers. And professions with lowest divorce rate are farmers with only 7.63. Uh, 
uh, clergy, maybe this among the uh, Protestant uh, clergy, then the optometrists, and the lowest are the agricultural engineers. And ages 28 to 32, according to the survey, could be the best time to get married. Probably, they say, because these are uh, already professionals. They have uh, more or less established their their profession, their work. Another uh, fact is children of divorce parents are more likely to become divorcees also. And countries with uh, proportionately, and uh, this is another interesting uh, fact also, and countries with proportionately uh, Catholics have lower divorces rates like Latin America except uh, Cuba and Puerto Rico and in the case of Europe the lowest divorce rate is Ireland traditional Catholic country while the other countries divorce rates range for example between four to six in every thousand while in uh, Ireland is 1.94 only. Some facts only, interesting studies. No? We realize that the issue of divorce is indeed complex. It is a complex reality that it is difficult to make definitive conclusions. We can only point out trends and tendencies that could help us in our reflection. One realization is that persons like the millennials who marry later, that there are lesser divorce in their groups, they say. They point out that those who marry between 28 to 32 of age are less likely to divorce. I think this fact points to that truth that persons who are more mature and prepared emotionally, professionally, financially are proven to have more stable marriages. The fact that Catholic countries like Latin America, Ireland have less divorce rates is probably due to the uh, legacy of the Catholic doctrine, the strong teaching on the indissolubility of Christian marriage. Our readings today, particularly the first reading and the gospel, insist on the permanence and indissolubility of marriage because it is founded on the very will of God already in creation and this is reaffirmed by Jesus himself. Jesus reaffirmed this in the context of the teaching on divorce practiced during his time which according to his interlocutors was permitted by Moses. Jesus points out that this concession given by Moses was due to the stubbornness or in other translation they say because of the hardness of heart. Hardness of heart is understood as another way of saying living according to our sinfulness our refusal to listen and to obey God's will. The Lord is saying here that there is breakdown in marriage, relationships, or other relationships because we let sin reign in our lives. 
sin induces us to close ourselves before God and also it induces us also to be close unto ourselves in relationship with others. Saint Augustine would call uh, a sinner, a, hu a sinful human as incurvatus in se, turned or curved inward on oneself. A person turned into oneself, full of oneself, would be hard up in seeing the other's perspectives, but only one's own feelings, one's own interests, all his or her concerns. And this is not many times the cause of breakdown of any relationship when we allow only ourselves as the center of the world. In this case, relationship becomes impossible. That's the beginning of the end of relationship. And I think our faith, our Christian faith, our Catholic faith is important because it initiates us to see beyond ourselves and enables us to move beyond ourselves because faith is a cultivation of that relationship with God, a being beyond ourselves. Faith trains us to live not only for ourselves, but for God and for others. In other words, a life of grace and holiness which is given by God enables us to open ourselves and relate with Him, with others. And this enables us to appreciate others, not only our own interest. We realize, as I've said, that marriage, divorce are complex realities and there are no easy formulas to remedy problems related to this in our society today. There are no magical formulas for this. But the readings today invites us to consider the foundation of marriage, God, and the life of holiness, life that is radically open to God, to His will, and to His ways. That life founded on God's will bring us to a greater appreciation and openness to others. That makes relationship grow. As we uh, meditate and celebrate this Mass, we pray especially couples in difficult situations in, uh, that God may strengthen them and help them go beyond their whims and caprices and be able to open themselves and hear and appreciate their partner beyond themselves, beyond their cares and interests. And may the God of love who calls us into relationship be our strength in continuing to be patient, to be open to God and to each other. Amen.